All right, so this set of notes is just looking at a few more examples, kind of mixing together our rules for counting addition and multiplication and sequences and those types of problems. All right, so there's a few more examples and then a few in this set of notes for you to try. Right, suppose we have license plates, their sequence of numbers, right? What order they in matters, right? Sequence matters. Suppose that sequence of three letters is followed by three digits. A digit may repeat, a letter may repeat. All right, digits are 0, 9, letters A through Z. The letter combinations VET and MDZ and DPZ are reserved all right, for disabled veterans, medical practitioners, and disabled persons, respectively. How many non-restricted license plates are possible? All right, so we're actually looking for the complement here. We want to figure out how many are left over if we take away the uh, disabled veterans, medical practitioners, and disabled person types. Okay, so we want to look for non-restricted. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to find the universal, how many are there total, and subtract away the number of restricted. All right, that's the complement rule. So I've got to find two sets. I've got to find the universal, and I've got to find the complement. Right. Well, the universal one's the easier one. It's the bigger set, but it's actually the easier one. So a number in my universal would be I can make any plate, right? Any plate possible. I can choose any letter followed by any three di digits. A letter and a digit may repeat. So I've got my three letters, one, two, three letters, and my three digits. The letters can be anything in the alphabet, so it's 26, 26, 26, times itself three times, and the digits can be anything, so it's 10 times 10 times 10. And so if I shorthand that, that's 26 cubed times 10 cubed. And I'm going to leave it like that for right now because that's a fairly large number. I will multiply it out uh, before the problem's all said and done, but I'm going to leave it 26 cubed times 10 cubed. And so that would be the total number of license plates. If we have all license plates are three letters followed by three digits, and you can have repeats. All right, so that's the first part. Right, now I have to figure out the number of restricted. At least the ones that we're, we're talking about. These are the restricted letters. So in order to have it be a restricted plate, I have to have the letters V, E, T in that order, and then followed by three digits. Or, I have to have the letters M, D, Z in that order, followed by three digits. Or, I have to have the letters D, P, Z, followed by three digits. And so, we've got our and and our or statements here, right? It's a mix of and and ors. And so what really it, it comes down to is it's the digits that matter, right? There's only one way to get the V, E, T. And then I've got the digits. Well, the digits are the 10 times 10 times 10, like before. So it's 1 times 10 cubed. Or the MDZ, which there's only one way to get MDZ. And then it's the 10 cubed again. Or, so we add, again, DPZ, one way to do that. And then the digits would be 10 cubed. And so what this means is 10 cubed is 1,000. So there's 1,000 veterans license plates. There's 1,000 medical practitioner license plates. And there's a thousand disabled persons license plates. And so the restricted license plates come to 3,000. Right. Which are those are the plates I don't want. Right. I want to leave off the restricted plates, those specific restricted plates, and what's left over. All right, so to figure out what I'm actually looking for, number of non restricted is my universal set which is 26 cubed times 10 cubed minus the 3,000 restricted plates I want to throw out, right? I don't want those. I want the non, the complement, the non-restricted license plates. All right, well, that's a really big number. If you multiply that out, that's 17576000 minus 3,000, and so it comes down to 17573000, and that's the answer we're looking for. That's how many non-restricted... So there are 
573,000 non-restricted plates if our license plates are a sequence of three lettered followed by three digits where we're allowed repetition. All right, so that's the answer to that one. All right, there are 17,573,000 non-restricted license plates. All right, next one. I suppose security passcode Right, a passcode is a sequence, which means order matters. Right, it matters when you have a passcode on anything, your phone, your tablet, whatever, door. Um, it's got to matter how you type it in, right? So a sequence containing the digits 0 through 9. So has either a sequence containing the digits 0 to 9 and two different letters. Containing a digit. Read that right. A digit and two different letters. Or two digits, and they have to be different, that's important, and a letter. All right, how many different passcodes are possible? All right, so I'm going to get this set up. So the number of codes, well, I have a digit and two different letters, which means no repeats, right, two different letters or two different digits and one letter. All right, what, again, the different means no repeats. That's what this word different means. It means I can't repeat my letters here and I can't repeat my digits there. All right, well, I've got the digit here, one digit. Well, there are ten possibilities for that one digit. And then I've got my two letters. They've got to be different letters, so as soon as I pick one, I can't pick it again, right? If I pick T, I can't pick T again. All right, so there's 26 letters for the first one, but there's only 25 letters for the second choice in my code. All right, so that's option one, right? One letter followed by two digit. Or, so we add, option two two digits, which have to be different, followed by a letter. Right, so the first digit had ten options, but the second digit only has nine options, right? Because I've already picked a digit, I can't pick the same digit twice. And then the one letter, and there are 26 outcomes for the one letter. And then we multiply that out. 10 times 26 times 25, plus 10 times 9 times 26. And so the number of codes possible is 8,840. All right, the next one's similar one that you're to try on your own. So again, it's like the license plate example, but there is an additional part to it. The first digit cannot be zero. You are allowed repetition, all right? But there is this catch to it. The first digit in your sequence of digits cannot be zero, meaning there's only the nine numbers that are not zero. But after you do the first digit, the second and third digits can have zero. All right, so you get the ten digits back. All right, so see if you can't do that one on your own. All right, the last part of this particular set of notes is figuring out how many possible test answer sheets there are. All right, we like these types of questions. kind of like one of those common ones, kind of like rolling a dice and flipping a coin. All right, suppose I have a test that consists of two parts. All right, part one is five true and false questions. Part two is six multiple choice questions, each with one correct answer out of four responses. So there's one answer that's correct, but I had four choices, right? I can pick choice A, B, C, or D. And that's supposed to say no answer can be left blank, right? I have to answer it. If I could leave one blank, that would be another choice. But suppose I have to answer, it automatically answers for me. I want to know how many possible answer sheets are there. All right, if I were to do every single option possible right, for my true, false, and my multiple choice, how many possible test answer sheets are there if it was completely randomized? And they have to complete both parts. So I have to figure out the number of ways to complete part one and the number of ways to complete part two. And so I'm going to have to multiply that. And so that's what I'm going to sort of do. I'm going to split it into the two parts. First thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to have to multiply once I figure this out. So first thing I'm going to figure out is how many ways to do part one. And then separate over here, I'm going to figure out how many ways to do part two. 
Alright, but I'm going to start with part one. So part one was five true false questions. And you have to answer them all. Right, so there's one, two, three, four, five true false questions. And they all have to be answered. Right? I have to answer the first one is true and false, and the second one is true and false, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth. Alright, so it's all and, so it's multiplying. Well, for, so this would be question one, this would be question two, right? This would be question one, question two, question three, question four, question five. Each one of those questions has two possible answer choices, right? True or false. I can go either true or false with those. And so for each one, it's kind of like flipping a coin. There are two options for every single one of those five questions. And so the number of possible outcomes is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, five times. And so we shorthand that. Well, it's 2 to the fifth, right? And so number of ways to complete part 1 is 2 to the fifth. I'm going to write that down here. Part 1, 2 to the fifth. Or if you multiply that out, that's 32. All right, so there are 32 ways to complete part 1. But I'm not done yet, that's only half the problem, and I have to complete part two. All right, so I'm going to take that times however many ways there are to complete part two. All right, well, part two was six multiple choice, which there were four choices. options for my multiple choice, my A, B, C, or D. And so same idea. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. There's my six multiple choice questions, right? This would be question one, question two, question three, four, five, and six. I have to complete them all, right? I have to complete question one and two and three and four and five and six. Each one of them had four possible answers. Four possible ways that if you write write the test I could put the an correct answer in four spots and so there were four choices for question one four choices for question two and all the way down the line there were four choices and so that would be four to the sixth right four times itself six times so number of ways to complete part two was four to the sixth and that's a much bigger number all right, four to the sixth. If you can't read that, I'm gonna write a little neater. Four to the sixth comes out four thousand ninety-six. All right, so to complete both parts, part one and part two, well now I multiply those. Right, number of ways to complete both would be 32 for the first part times 496 for the second part. And so 32 times 496 comes out 131,072 total ways the test can be written. All right, that would be the total number of outcomes if we had every single way you could answer the test questions. All right, the second part, how many different ways or how many different answer sheets are possible if the students are required to complete either part one or part two? All right, so the first one, they had to complete both parts, right? Part one and part two. Well, this one, it changes one word, but one word makes a big difference. Number of ways to complete part one or part two. Well, it changes instead of multiplying out the number of ways, we're going to add. All right, so we add the number of ways to complete part one. Well, the number of ways to complete part one was 32, plus the number of ways to complete part two, which was 4,096. Add them together, 4,128 different ways to complete them if they only have to do the true and false or the multiple choice. They don't have to fill out both, so they can leave one part blank. All right, so it changes it, right? That makes a big difference when we went from AND to OR, right? AND was a much bigger set than the OR set. All right, so on your own, see if you can't do one like this. Again, like I said, we like these types. There'd probably be something like this on the test. A lot of times something like this typically shows up on the final exam. You'll see it again uh, where we're picking, when we get to probabilities, we'll do test questions. What's the odds that you randomly guess so many test questions correctly? 
So try this one on your own. All right. So instead of part one, part two, it's part B and part A, and it's still a multiple choice and true and false. It's just a slightly different question, but you'll answer it similar to the one I just did. All right. That finishes up this set of notes. I'll stop there. We will pick up six point three, part two, next time.